This is the second half of a lecture on gene expression and regulating it um, from April 24th, 2020, focusing mostly on two particular operons in bacteria, the LAC operon and the TRIP operon. So the main goals of this lecture are just to um, explain what the LAC operon is and what genes are encoded by it, as well as to talk about the mechanism of the LAC operon and what happens when lactose is present and absent in the cell, and then compare the LAC operon to another operon, the tryptophan operon. And so, as we talked about before, operons are um, basically sections of DNA in bacteria, multiple genes that are controlled by the same promoter, right? And so, an operon generates that polycystronic mRNA or the mRNA that contains multiple genes in it. Operons are specific to bacteria and archaea. Um, eukaryotes don't have operons. But operons are one of the things that makes gene expression more efficient in um, bacteria and prokaryotes in general than eukaryotes. Because you can express all of these genes at the same time under the control of one promoter, which means one polymerase binding to one site and making, making multiple genes. And as such, most operons contain genes that actually um, work within the same processes. And so in the case of the LAC or lactose operon, there are three genes. They're under the control of the one promoter, which you can see down here in green. And as the name suggests, all of these uh, genes have something to do with the metabolism of lactose, which is a milk sugar. And so there are three genes, as I said, in the LAC operon. The first one is LAC-Z, and then we have LAC-Y, and LAC-A. And each one of these genes encodes a different enzyme. LAC-Z encodes beta-galactosidase, and what this enzyme does is breaks down lactose into its component sugars, glucose, and galactose. LAC-Y encodes a lactose permease, which is a channel that allows lactose uptake into the cell. And LAC-A encodes this enzyme here, this transacetylase, for which the function is still a little bit um, unknown. And so in order to break down lactose um, in the environment, the LAC operon would need to be in operation to make these different genes. But you might also expect that if you don't have lactose in the environment, there's really no point in making a lactose breaking down enzyme another enzyme that brings lactose into the cell because there's no lactose there to bring into the bacteria. And so um, this operon is controlled by the presence and absence of lactose by a particular repressor called the lac repressor. And so when there's no lactose in the environment, the lactose or lac repressor binds to the operator of this lac operon, which you can see in yellow, and inhibits transcription of these three genes, the lac Z, lac Y, lac A genes. Because there's no need to be making any of these enzymes if there's no lactose in the environment. However, when there is lactose present, a small amount of it can leak into the cell and be broken down into a metabolite known as allolactose, which you can see down here as these little triangles. And so the repressor, which was bound to the operator in the absence of lactose, now has allolactose, or this allosteric effector binding to it, changing its shape, and is no longer able to bind the operator, which leaves RNA polymerase free to bind here in the promoter and start transcription of these three genes. So that allolactose binding axon is an inducer to induce the lac repressor off of the gene and allow transcription to take place. And alternatively, as the lactose in the environment maybe goes down, allolactose levels in the cell will also go down and um, inhibition of this repressor will stop because there won't be any allolactose to induce it off of the DNA and the repressor 
will return to its active state, binding that operator and turning off transcription. So it's important to remember that control of gene expression is sort of cyclical based on the presence of lactose or the lack of it in the case of the lac operon. And so there are many different operons that act in response to many different molecules, different sugars such as arabinose, um, and in this case, amino acids. So trip is the tryptophan operon. It acts in response to the amino acid tryptophan, um, and it contains five genes under the control of one promoter. And the function of all five of these enzymes is in the biosynthesis of the amino acid tryptophan. And so you can imagine that if you have a lot of tryptophan around, you wouldn't need to turn this promoter on. You wouldn't need any of these genes because you already have tryptophan. However, when there's not enough tryptophan and you need to synthesize it or make it, RNA polymerase can bind to the promoter, turn transcription on in the trip operon and produce tryptophan. And that's because there's a repressor gene, the trip repressor, that's not bound to the operator, not in the way. Um, and RNA polymerase can do its thing and make all of these tryptophan biosynthesis genes. However, when the levels of tryptophan are high, why would you make more of something that you don't need? And why would you make all of the enzymes required to make that amino acid? It's a waste of energy and a waste of time. And so when there's enough tryptophan in the cell here, you can see it, it actually act, acts as its own co-repressor on the trip repressor protein binds to it to form an active complex and that trip repressor goes from inactive to active which means it binds to the DNA at the operator and since it's a repressor it stops transcription. Once again when tryptophan levels get low there's not enough of it here to bind and act as a co-repressor so it will fall off and you'll end up with an inactive trip repressor and therefore able to transcribe all these tryptophan biosynthesis um, enzymes again. And so it's important to notice that both um, the TRIP and LAC operons are examples of negative control because they both um, involve repressor proteins, but they work through different mechanisms. And so that seems kind of like a perfect exam question to compare and contrast these two forms of operon and the mechanisms behind them.